Hey friends, welcome back to my home. Today we are going to have fun doing a spring reset type of a video. I just have a few tasks that include things like adding in a little bit of spring decor, like these beautiful tulips that I'm about to put into this vase. And I also have um, a few spring cleaning type projects that I want to tackle this week as well. And a little bit of outdoor setup. We're just starting to get in to some weather where we can start getting it ready outside to enjoy the outdoors during these warmer months here in central Pennsylvania. I have been really wanting to master or to even try making a homemade matcha latte. I have kind of started to like matcha a little bit. I'm a big coffee drinker, but I've never tried to make matcha at home. So I did get some and I'm going to give it a whirl. I've seen a couple of other tutorial videos on how to make it and it seems fairly simple. So we'll give it a try and I'll let you guys know if it is successful and if it tastes like the coffee shop or cafe that I like to get my things from. Just going to add in some cold water. Tulips really like cold water. You can even put ice cubes in it. That helps them last just a little bit longer. A big thank you to Cheetah for sponsoring this portion of today's video. So one thing I wanted to tackle this week in picking up our house and just getting ready for spring was to refresh our little deck area here. I wanted to remove the old plants from our planters and Cheetah helped to bring in a beautiful bistro set to bring a casual and clean look to this space. We use this deck space a lot in the warmer months and it's a place where our family loves together and to have friends come and just spend time outside enjoying the weather and the sunshine and also in the evening enjoying our little fire table that we have out here as well. So these are fantastic chairs, honestly, I was really impressed with the quality of this set. It comes with some great plush thick cushions and they are water resistant and can be spot cleaned with warm water and mild soap. The other thing I so love about this set is that all of the chairs swivel for your comfort and they're so cozy. I just think that these are going to be fantastic to sit outside in the sun and read a book or have my morning coffee here and the colors and tones that they've put into the weave of this set is just beautiful and will work with any throw cushions I want to put here or throw blankets, any extra extra decor or flower arrangements I put out on the deck this spring and summer are gonna go fantastic with this color. Cheetah thought of everything. They even sent along some little grippy mats to make sure that the cushions stay in place. This set is so well built and such high quality. I know that it's a set we can have for years and I could even use it in our sunroom space or our screened in porches. I am so excited to dress up this space with flowers and filling my planters. It's just not quite past our last frost date here, so this gets me excited to be able to set up this set and begin to use it even before we get to fill it all with flower arrangements and make new planters. Cheetah also sent me this great Sienna chair. It's so beautiful. Everyone in our family was admiring just how it looks. The wood tones and the way that the cords are woven along the side. I have this little nook on the end of my kitchen now that we've been using kind of as a small seating space and it fits in so well. Check out the information and link in the description box and use the code Adeline18 to get 18% off the Leanna Outdoor collection and add a line 60 to get $60 off the Sienna chair. 
All right, so before I show you my supplies, I have to show you this mug. I love getting a new mug for each season. A lot of times I reuse the mug every year then, and I've never bought a mug specifically for spring, but this is like beyond adorable. I think you can see it. I was trying to get it in focus, but it has some lemons, some strawberries, some wildflowers. It's just so, so precious. And I did find it at TJ Maxx and it says that it was hand painted. So I'm really excited to make my iced matcha in this. I did get some tea heating in my electric tea kettle and I'm gonna be using this matcha. Now, I did a little more research since I bought this and I think I needed to get what they consider the ceremonial grade of matcha this is the culinary grade i think it's still going to be good but apparently that is a better grade i'm gonna probably try to use this up if i enjoy the flavor of it but um you can find this at a lot of different stores and i can also link it from amazon below and then to make my latte i have some ice over here and i'm going to also mix in this vanilla creamer and some almond milk to make my milk part of my latte. So this should be pretty easy. I believe these are in packets in here and I'm going to mix this up first. A lot of people have a little whisk. It's called a matcha whisk, I believe, if I am phrasing that correctly. And they use that to kind of whisk up the water and the powder first, but I just have a little frother, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that. All right, so it wasn't in small packets. It actually was this little baggie inside of a box, which is kind of a funny way to package something, but I'm just gonna open this up and I'm actually going to use a teaspoon of this. It gives me kind of a ratio on the back. And to put it inside of my little measuring cup, I'm actually gonna use this little sieve. Apparently, it's a good way to make sure that you don't have clumps in your matcha. And if you want your cup to stay looking nice, it's a good idea to do this in a separate little cup or a measuring um, thingy like this so that you can easily pour all into your cup and now there's no clumps and things like that on the sides of the cup. Since I'm making this iced, I'm really going to only put probably around an ounce or so of liquid in there, just so that it doesn't heat up my drink. And then I'm just gonna use this. Now I'm kind of using my frother in place of that matcha whisk like a lot of people have. moment of truth. Let's see if I have cafe level matcha skills. Oh wow, that is so, so delicious. That's definitely better than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> so now we have a fun drink to move on to our next project. I thought that it would be fun to make a to-do list with you all as we work our way through this video. I did take some of this through the week as I was tackling different spring projects around my house. And one of those things that, as you'll see, I have put on the back burner has been refreshing our bathroom. And so I decided to get a new shower curtain whenever you have a white shower curtain they usually only last so long before they have handprints and other things on them so i got a new shower curtain and a new liner both at tj maxx i love finding cheap liners and shower curtains there it's just a good way to save a couple extra dollars and whenever i took all of the curtain down i did realize that the hooks a few of them were broken so that's something I'll probably do sometime soon is grab a new pack of shower curtain hooks as well. 
but for now we got this nice fresh shower curtain to just refresh this space we use this bathroom pretty hard so it is a space that if i don't keep up with it it can get a little out of hand as you're going to see here in a moment about to show you all something that I have been absolutely procrastinating like to the point where I've known that this is what I was gonna film today is taking care of our bathroom up here but I've literally been finding every other task possible to do this morning besides doing this because I've been dreading doing this I think sometimes I face projects head on I'm that type of person and then other times whenever I know that it's kind of a monotonous thing that I'm going to have to keep up with, then I just like, when I know it's going to probably get messy again, it tends to forlate me and then I'm like, just don't do it for a long time until it's like beyond repair. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But we do live in a old farmhouse, hence the size of this bathroom. You can see I showed you a clip of the other side of it, there's a window, there's a toilet, there's a little vanity here. I put this shelf in when we first moved in because it's one of the only forms of storage that we have in this bathroom. There's a nice shower, a nice big tub. We love that part. But there is a storage issue. And this is our one of two bathrooms. The other one is also very, very small. It's in the downstairs, but this is in the upstairs where the bedrooms are. So that means that me, my husband, and our three daughters, which are six, seven, and eight, and they're starting to get their own hair products and such things, we all share this. So this is usually the thing I leave for last to take care of and clean and organize and all of that stuff. So I've done multiple like whole house declutters in the last few months and this has been literally, I've just like pretended this room didn't exist. So this might not seem like a big deal to most of you. I did actually clean up a little bit of the sink before I showed you this because I just, I guess maybe my pride, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm gonna show you the underneath of this sink. I have to sit down. I'm gonna take you guys with me. I'm gonna sit down, take everything out. This is so small. Like it's literally just the sink. There's no extra counter space or anything but it's the only place we have to like actually put stuff. So I'm gonna take everything out. I got two new organizers. These are both from the new line at Hobby Lobby, which I'm really excited about. It is called Nook and Company. I don't know if you can see it. The window's kind of bright, but I got one like this and I got one like this also from Nook and Company and the prices on this stuff super affordable this here was $4.99 super super good I feel like Walmart's are even more than that but especially if you're comparing to like somewhere like the container store very expensive and TJ Maxx sometimes has really good deals on stuff like this but if you want like eight of the same size, it can be hard to find a lot of the same thing. So that's really exciting. And then this guy here was a bit more, but honestly it has a handle and all of that. And this one was $8.99. So I'm hoping between the two of these, I've got a little bit better storage under here and it's gonna slide underneath the pipes and all of that. I tried having a Lazy Susan in there and y'all, I can't even see the Lazy Susan at this point it it's buried so we're gonna find it um but i am going to just turn the camera around and show you what i got going on so i decided to tackle this mess <laughs> this pile with sorting it out as i took everything out of the vanity so i made a pile of stuff that i knew i wanted to put back into the vanity or in those storage containers that i showed you all and then i had another pile of stuff that needed to be relocated 
I am not kidding you all. I just feel like every single time we have an area that has some clutter going on, it is like a magnet for other clutter. So I tend to do it and my husband and my children tend to do it. We all tend to throw random items in with mixed up piles like this. So there was a lot of misplaced items in this vanity that needed to be put back into their rightful location. And then there was of course some products that were either out of date or we were simply not using that needed to be removed from the vanity as well. And I was super happy to see that my containers that I picked up fit under here well. I am someone that generally measures everything before I go shopping, but it was on a spur of the moment. So I was glad that I could kind of think about how big my cabinet was and really hope that it all fit in here and it really hit, fit in here well. And these containers will be simple to also pull out and set up on the counter um, to get into if we don't want to reach down under here and that's something else that i felt like was really lacking with the lazy susan being under there i just wanted something that i could remove the whole entire container all right so we have a nice spring candle going here and this is where we keep a lot of like hair ties hair brushes things like that for the girls. My curling iron is like looped around on the other side of this thing. And then that is our washcloths up there. So I'm gonna show you what is left down here. Oh, we have a bag of Epsom salts there in the corner. But I am very happy with this setup. I realized what the holdup was down here. A lot of it was like back stock stuff that really just needed to be moved to our cellar where I keep a lot of just like extra stuff. So like toothpaste, um, there was extra bottles of rubbing alcohol, just stuff that was piled up in here. So now we've got a little bit of a better system. This thing I actually kept in here is just a metal like organizer thing I have had for years. This does not fit up above where the medicine cabinet is. We do have our toothbrushes and other tooth care there, but this is too tall to fit in there. It's a huge thing of mouthwash. So I just have it in here back there. The hairdryer fits perfectly in the other side of this thing. Here I've got just mainly hair products, curl creams and stuff like that, jam for braiding, things like that because I do braid my daughter's hair and just hair basically in there. In this thing here we have lotions, um, aftershave care and nail stuff and then just some Q-tips. So a lot more simplified. I'm so happy I got this done and I'm glad I pushed through to get it accomplished today. All right, so I'm sitting on the floor in our dining slash sunroom and the sun, it's like mid afternoon. So like the sun's gonna be in and out a lot, but I'm gonna talk a little bit about houseplant care. I think I'm gonna start inserting this a lot more into my home channel videos here because a lot of people ask if my plants are real, if um, how to keep them alive, those kinds of things and it's actually something that is a lot easier than you think, which of course everybody likes to say that, but it's so true. Um, most of the time I find people tend to kill houseplants whenever they're kind of over caring for them, um, over watering them and that kind of thing. But today we're gonna talk a little bit about the fiddly figs I have sitting here. So this one here sits here in our sunroom. And then this here actually sits in our living room. She's really dusty and that's something that I'm really bad at is keeping up with the dusting of my plants, but maybe we can do a little bit of dusting today with this project. So something that I think a lot of people do not think about when it comes to plants um, that are in the house, a lot of them are very jungle type plants and so sometimes they are a species of plant that has a lot of other plants around them so they might grow in bunches so when they grow in bunches they have kind of each other to lean on their root systems really help each other out but whenever they're in a pot like this 
it is a little bit harder on the plant to keep its own ground in a sense. So something you can do is add trellises or add support systems for your plants. So if you have plants that are your support system, maybe you should give them a support system as well. <laughs> um, but I grabbed this huge bunch. I didn't even know I was gonna get an entire pack like this, but um, they came like this. So I was like, well, I'll just keep them because I have a lot of plants and I'm able to use them in different areas. Um, but these are just bamboo rods and what I'm going to do is actually give these guys a little rod in the mid middle of them. Um, this one here actually has one. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera. Maybe if I pull back some leaves, he's really short down here and he actually would have started out with a really small rod like that. But this one's been getting a lot taller lately, and I'm so sorry if you're seeing all the dust fly off that thing. But this one's getting a lot taller lately, and to help it out, it's so thin right here, if you can see that, um, just to give it some more support. And a lot of times, if you give plants support, it helps them to put more of their energy into their leaves and foliage instead of keeping themselves upright, which in a house for me i like to see beautiful full plants so the goal for me is that they're going to be ornamental and so giving them that little boost with these rods helps out a lot i don't think that this one has a rod in it but i'm going to give it one in hopes it will help it grow taller because if it has something to lean on it definitely can help that out i will insert a clip here also of the trellis that my big mama monsteria is attached to that trellis is so helpful monsterias are actually a massive vine plant and in the jungle they grow up trees and things like that or in warmer climates they tend to grow up things so giving them a trellis to lean on to grow will actually help them increase in size and be really gorgeous. Once I got started into dusting these plants off, I realized how incredibly dirty they were. And that's not very good for your plants. Once they have a lot of dust or a good layer of dust on them, it can actually really prevent them from thriving. And so I felt kind of bad at how dusty they got i think i show you a little bit of my paper towel here in a minute and i do use damp paper towels just because i don't want to risk my laundry soap or anything that could be on a washcloth or something like that um making my plants sick plants can be a little finicky to what you put on them so you just want to be careful with that so i just find using a damp paper towel is one of the best ways to wipe them off and I don't add any soap or anything else. I just use water. And I wanted to touch on how to grow big house plants, how to grow house plants that really thrive. A lot of people ask me this question because I've had house plants for some time and most of them have done fairly well. So my biggest secret is leave them alone. <laughs> I think that a lot of times when we overwater, we overtend to them besides my neglect to dust them <laughs> but i tend to water my plants so oh, i mean it can be like almost once a month um, sometimes every three weeks sometimes every two weeks but for sure not every week now the type of plants you have also play a part in that but most of mine are what you would call more of a tropical style plant where they're used to getting dried out from the sun and being in pretty intense heat and then eventually having a rainy season where they're going to get more rain so they like to have dried out soil before they have more water and if you give them too much water they will actually start to die the leaves will start to fall off sometimes the leaves turn yellow generally leaves turning yellow is a sign of over watering and i do use a plant food as well that is specifically made for house plants and i can leave the link for that below in the description box if that's something that you would be interested in thank you all so much for joining me today in my little projects around the house 
I hope that this gave you a bit of motivation or maybe inspired you in some way or another. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Check out the links for everything mentioned in this video below, including the cheetah set and other things that they offer. And I'll see you all in my next video.